So after the first step, we will uh, enter the second phase and there we will at first distinguish several cases so that you get a little bit feel for the type of problem we are facing. So in the first case, we assume that the polynomial that we are dividing with is a product of linear factors. So the denominator is a product of several linear factors a1, x1 plus b1 times etc. etc. ak times x plus bk. So our general approach here will be that we try to write rx divided by qx. So we assume that we already went through step one and uh, and that we may um, express this fraction as a1 divided by the first linear term, etc., etc., as a sum plus ak divided by ak x plus bk. So, for example, our remainder term in the last example was 1 over x squared minus 1. And uh, x squared minus 1 is a product of x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we can factorize x squared minus 1 into two linear factors. So we try to write this fraction as a1 divided by x plus 1 plus a2 divided by x minus 1. So how to find a1 and a2? Well, we're going to do this by working back. So we bring everything on the right hand side back onto the standard form where we have uh, denominator x plus 1, x minus 1. So we may do so, but then the numerator changes into a1 times x minus 1, 1. Yeah, so now we work back and now this expression that we obtain should be equal to 1 over x squared minus 1. Yeah, so, um, so a1 plus a2 times x plus a2 minus a1 divided by x plus 1, x minus 1, should be equal to 1 over x squared minus 1. And this should hold for numerous values of x. So basically this states that this says that a1 plus a2 times x plus a2 minus a1 should be the same as 1 for numerous values of x. Yeah, there should be identity. But this can only hold if the variable part, a1 plus a2 times x, vanishes. Or put other way, uh, in, uh, in other words, that a1 plus a2 should be 0. And the remainder term is a2 minus a1. This is a constant and should be equal to 1. So if we solve for these two linear equations with two unknowns, we find a1 equals minus a half and a2 equals a half. So there's a unique solution, so there are unique constants such that 1 over x squared minus 1 can be written as a1 divided by x plus 1 plus a2 divided by x minus 1. Yeah, in this case, a1 equals minus a half, so we write the primitive of minus a half divided by x plus 1 plus a half divided by x minus 1. Well, this is great, right? Since now we have two terms on which we can easily find a primitive. So primitive of minus a half divided by x plus 1, of course, equals minus a half times the natural logarithm of x plus 1 absolute value. And a half divided by x minus 1 has as a primitive a half times the ln of x minus 1 absolute. Plus, of course, in yellow, we see the integration constant. Yeah, so this can be done if we are able to write rx divided by qx as a1 divided by a linear term plus etc plus ak divided by ak x plus bk again a constant divided by a linear term then we can easily find the primitives of each of these uh, of these terms so we can find a primitive as a sum of all those primitives uh, for rx divided by q. 